Hi, I have an application where I need two cameras sending pictures to a computer without any human intervention. Everything is controlled by a computer and a controller board I made. To accomplish the unsupervised operation, I can't use batteries, so I bought two DC couplers. I didn't use the official Canon parts because they cost around 150 US dollars each, which would have meant spending 300 US dollars on two 8V AC to DC adapters. That doesn't sound very reasonable. Note that if you buy cheap adapters, you might want to spend a bit more on a decent AC to DC adapter. I mean, just the output capacitors alone on my power supply for the cameras cost more than complete adapter provided with the cable. This is a DC coupler. You have an AC to DC adapter, this is rated at 7.4 volts, and the adapter itself. All you need to do is to insert the adapter instead of the battery on the camera. These cameras already have a rubber tab that allows the DC cable to exit the body of the camera. The Canon 550D is working perfectly, but if you use a chip adapter on the newer 750D, you get this warning because it detects the battery is not genuine. You have to answer no and yes so you can operate the camera. This happens every time the camera loses power. The problem in my application is that if there was a power outage, everything will restart and the camera will be stuck in the warning screen until an operator saw it and unlocked the camera. My solution to the problem involves using an original Canon battery. This is the battery. I already modified it, that's why there is a wire coming out. I took the genuine battery and very carefully cut across the plastic shell. You need to be very careful not to puncture the lithium cells. Inside, there are two lithium cells, a grey plastic separator and a PCB. This is the bottom of the PCB. The two lithium cells are wired in series. This is where the positive of the first cell connects. This is the negative of the first cell, which is connected to the positive of the second cell, and this is the negative of the second cell. This is 0 volts, this is 4 volts, and this is 8 volts. The first thing I did was to connect a resistor where each of the lithium cells used to be, and solder the positive of the adapter to the positive of the first battery, and the ne negative wire of the adapter to the negative of the second cell. This supplies 8 volts like the lithium cells did, and the resistors divide the voltage in half so the controller sees 4 volts in the middle. Unfortunately, this didn't work, because of the way the controller is programmed. From the moment you remove one of the cells, it stops supplying power to the camera, even if you replace the cell. This is probably to stop people from replacing the cells of an old battery. In this PCB, the positive is wired directly to the camera. The negative is provided by a low side switching MOSFET. I didn't have anything more to lose at this point, so I just bypassed the MOSFET with a shunt and surprise surprise, the camera powered up and recognized the battery as genuine. One of those chips probably is just for authentication. Now you just need to replace the PCB in the plastic holder and stick everything in the old battery case. You also have to make a hole in the lower left side of the battery case for the power cable to come out. I didn't glue the case together, it fits very snugly inside as is.
With the ACT adapter, when power is applied, the camera identifies the genuine battery and goes straight into operation.